This video introduces a form of a matrix called reduced row echelon form that can be handy when using matrices to solve systems of linear equations. Consider this matrix that appeared in a previous video. If this matrix represents a system of linear equations in the variables x, y, and z, then what are the solutions to the system? Well, if it represents a system of equations, then this column represents the coefficients of x, this column is the coefficients of y, and this column is the coefficients of z. The final rightmost column represents the constants that are on the right sides of the equations. So if we write out the first equation in the first row, we get that 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z is equal to negative 8 thirds. In other words, x equals negative 8 thirds. Similarly, if we write out the second equation, we get that y is equal to negative 11 thirds. And the third equation tells us that z is equal to 5 thirds. So this matrix makes it really easy to read off the solution to a system of linear equations, much easier than this other matrix that we transformed into the simpler matrix and that actually has the same solution. Next, let's consider this matrix. If it also represents a system of linear equations in the variables x, y, and z, then what are the solutions to the system of equations? If we write out the equations, 1 times x plus 2 times y plus 0 times z equals 3, 1 times z equals 7, and the last equation doesn't really give us any new information. It just says if we, multiply, if we use 0 coefficients for all the variables, that adds up to 0. We can rewrite those equations a little more simply by saying that z equals 7 and x plus 2y equals 3. There's no unique solution here. As long as z equals 7 and x is equal to 3 minus 2y, we can make y be anything we want. For example, if y equals 0, then x would be 3. If y equals 1, then x would be 1 also. So we have infinitely many solutions. They're just all of the form 3 minus 2y, y, 7, where y can be anything. But it's still pretty easy to read off that information just from the matrix. Much easier than if we were given some other matrix, like this one, that turns out to actually contain equivalent information and have the same solution set. So what properties of these two matrices makes it particularly easy to read off the solution to the associated system of linear equations? One property is the presence of all these leading ones. The first number in each row that's not entirely zeros is a 1. Another property is the presence of lots of zeros. Notice that when for each leading 1, all the numbers above it in its column are zeros. We'll use these two properties, the presence of leading 1s and the presence of lots of zeros, especially above the leading 1s, along with a couple other properties to define something called reduced row echelon form. This is the form of a matrix that makes it particularly easy to read off the solutions for its associated system of equations. A matrix, like the ones on the previous page, are said to be in reduced row echelon form, abbreviated RREF, if, first of all, the first non-zero entry on each row that is not entirely zeros is the number 1. These are called leading ones. That's certainly true for this matrix. For the two rows that aren't entirely zeros, the first entry that's not zero is a 1. Second of all, the leading ones are in descending order. That means that each leading one is to the right of the leading ones in higher rows. That's also true in this example. This, this leading one has no higher rows, but this leading one is to the right of the leading one in the higher row. If I switched the first and second row of this matrix, though, 
then this property would no longer hold because this leading one would be to the left of the leading one above it, not to its right. The third property is that each leading one has a column of zeros above it. In other words, it has a zero above it in every row above it. So in this example, this leading one doesn't have any rows above it, and this leading one only has one row above it, but it does have a zero above it in that row. And the final condition is that if there are any rows that are entirely zeros, they must be at the bottom of the matrix. Definitely true in this example. So this example is an example of a matrix in reduced row echelon form. Please pause the video for a moment and see if you can figure out which of these six matrices are in reduced row echelon form. Matrix A is in reduced row echelon form. It has a leading one in every row that's not entirely zeros. The ones are in descending order. Above each leading one, there's a zero, or column of zeros, and the rows that are entirely zeros are at the bottom. Matrix B is also in reduced row echelon form. All three of its rows have leading ones. The ones are in descending order. And above each leading one, there's a column of zeros. There are no rows that are entirely zero here to worry about. Matrix C is not in reduced row echelon form. Why not? Well, it doesn't have a leading one in the second row. The first non-zero entry of this second row is a two instead of a one. Matrix D is also not in reduced row echelon form. This time the problem is that the leading ones are not in descending order. This leading one is to the right of the leading one in the row above it, as we want it to be. But this leading one is actually to the left of the one, the leading one in the row above it. Matrix E is not in reduced row echelon form. It does have the leading ones, and they are in descending order, but we don't always have zeros above the leading ones. In particular, this leading one has a one above it, not a column of zeros. Finally, this last matrix is not in reduced row echelon form either. This time it's the simple matter of the row that's entirely zeros is supposed to go at the bottom. In this video, we introduced an especially nice form for a matrix called reduced row echelon form. To be in reduced row echelon form, a matrix has to have a leading one in each row that is not entirely zeros. The leading ones have to be in descending order. The leading ones have to be topped by columns of zeros. And any rows that are all zeros have to go at the bottom. In a future video, we'll practice getting matrices into reduced row echelon form using an algorithm called Gaussian elimination.